I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is February 1st, 2021. In this video, I'll be going over a spool holder I designed from my Prusa i3 Mark III. Okay, a few interesting things. Uh, I have this old spool holder I've been using forever on my i3 Mark III, and I like it a lot. I like the design because it just snaps in over that metal bar and you can move it back and forth. And it's got this one arm. And also at the time when I printed this, this is one of the first things I printed, I was amazed that you could print threads at the time. And it's to me, it's still pretty amazing that you can print threads and they work pretty well. I love printing threads now. I mean, this thing is just was really cool at the time. Uh, and also, let me uh, do a little paperwork here. So uh, this thing, which is great, happens to be thing. It's on Thingiverse. I'll put a link in the show notes. And it's thing 2764707. And it's really awesome. It's one of the first prints I did. I think it's really, really sweet. Um, but also, here's the one I just put up, the i3, the one, the one for the i3, this guy. And it's over here on Prusa Printers, and over there it's four five four nine ten. Um, and also, if you want to print this out, it's probably a good idea, and it's a good idea in general to have a deburring tool, because there's a part of this that you probably need to deburr a little bit to kind of shave it down to help it to snap on. And if you're not familiar with the deburring tool, they're really great because you can just kind of shave off a little bit, a, bit, a little bit of the of the print on there, and it's really, really useful. Uh, anyway, but back to this. So this thing. It's great, but I've had it for years. But you know, when something just works, and I've, I, I've been meaning to replace it for a long time, but when something just works, other things come up and you just you let it go, let it go, let it go. But you can see, I don't know if it shows very well, over the years, it's slightly been bending down. And a coworker of mine uh, just noticed in the back of my screen, you know, we're doing webcam stuff, and it's just been, it's been driving him nuts. Because it's a little bit crooked. It's like, you got to fix that. And I'm like, well, I've been planning to, but kind of forced, you know, he kind of forced me to get around to it and get it done. So this guy, um, it's kind of interesting. So this actually comes, this actually is five parts, but you don't actually have to do all five parts. Oh, boom. So there's this piece that we'll show a little bit later snapping on that just snaps on there. And then you have these threads, but they're, you know, you can put it on both sides. And what I've done is I've, I've done it in, uh, done this in two pieces just in case we want to do something different. So you don't have to do both sides, but that's an option. Like I may just put this up here with one side with one spool. And then I got the option to kind of put, you know, some kind of threaded stopper on the end so it doesn't pop off. So that's my idea. And also I can bump it up and do two. Some people like two sided for whatever reason, but... Anyway, so uh, let's go over the numbers. To print all this out, and this includes both sides, it took 23 hours and 5 minutes. It took 19.7 of electricity, and it weighs all together with both sides 0.198 kilograms. And at $20 per kilogram, it comes out to $3.96 for the whole thing, just for material. So in total, it's $4.16 to print. And so far, I'm liking it pretty well. So it's been working well for me. So let me go over a few things. Let me go kind of show an action, show how to put it on. For those who may not be familiar, it's pretty easy. You snap it on, but you may have to do a little shaving of it. Uh, and then uh, do, I'm going to go over a little bit of Fusion 360, what I did, and also what you can do, because maybe you want to change some of this, uh, or at least uh, change out um, the arms on it. Okay. Now, here's what you got to do to install this. Now, this is, this is one of the hard things is... As I found out, trying to get something that you can that'll go on here and snap on is pretty rough because it's got to go over. But you want to get it to snap on. To when it snaps on, it's tight. So it's really hard to figure that out. I kind of took some ideas from what he did and came up with my own little thing. And I think I got it well enough, but eh, we could do do some more tweaking. But on this, I don't know how well it shows up. There is a little nub here on the end that I've done. And one thing you may have to do is it may it may be too high up, so you can use a deburring tool and kind of shave it down a little bit, which I had to do just to get it in, because it takes a little bit of muscle to snap it on. But you want that because when you you want it to be firm when it's on, so it's kind of one of those catch twenty twos. Okay, so you, you know you just pop it on like that, and you can see it's over the back here, and then you gotta snap it on. And then the nice thing is you can move back and forth and not jostle too much. And I got these guys.
And again, you don't have to put two on. You can just do one if you want. Uh, boom. Boom. So now I'm set. Okay, now on to doing some Fusion 360 stuff. Okay, let me show you some of this arm stuff real quick. In case you want to do your own design in Fusion 360, it can be a little rough. So one of the hard parts, like I said, is trying to figure out how to get that to snap in. So if I go back and look at my sketch here at the beginning, oh yeah, it's just hard. If, if this is something you want to do. So here I have seven uh, millimeters here, and then I go up here, and I go, I believe, this guy. Oh, boy, everything's all messed up here, isn't it? It gets, it just gets complicated on how to do this. Oh, and then you can see, let's see, there's this sketch. Oh, not that one. I'm in the wrong sketch. That's why it's hard to see. There we go. Okay. okay. So here you can see I got this little nub down here. And in between here and here, I believe this one is seven. Yeah, that's seven centimeters right there. And then this one right here is well that should be 40 but i have this little notch in there so what i did is i drew a square in here kind of off kilter thinking it would go up and then snap in was my thought process so you can see what i did is i gave it a little bit of a nudge right here and then i gave it a little bit of a back here so it could go in there that was my idea and it kind of worked so yeah if you want to do this you gotta figure that out because you can't just make it a square it's going to be too tight and not get in there uh Okay, now what I want to do is show how to do one of these, one of the uh, the bar here. In case you want to do your own bar, because hey, my bar is pretty simple. It's just forty millimeters, so uh, you could make a screw in here. So let me go. The important part is boom, yeah, forty. So this thread here is forty, and if you look at my thread, it is forty millimeters. M forty times three. So you could do that yourself. You could make one yourself if you want to. And it is. Let's see how high is it? Fifteen millimeters. So with that, let's go. Let's go make one. We'll just go make a whole another bar. Let's say you don't like my bar. You want to do your own bar. We'll go make our own bar. So here, I got a new. Well, it's always a good idea to click on here. Let's see. Get off this. It's always a good idea to make a new object. So make a new component. Hit OK. We'll call it a bar. Boom. And we'll come down here and we'll open up the origin. We'll click on this. And let's say you disagree with some of the stuff I did. So if I go back here on my original drawing, I think, uh, yeah, it's 30 millimeters in diameter. And I did that screw in there. But let's say, oh, you go, I don't want to do a screw and I don't want to make it 30 millimeters. I think that's too big. I want to make it smaller for some reason. So I'll go down here. Hit S and we'll say, okay, we'll make this, you know, 15 millimeters. You want to make it skinnier. Make it 15. And then we'll do a couple interesting things. Let's say you think I didn't go long enough. So I can hit Q, do a press pull tool. And I, I want to say I did 110. Let's say we just do 150, which is a ridiculous height. Yeah, great, 150. Uh, but now the problem is here is you want to flange out so you can get the. Um, because you're going to have to hit that. Ugh, let's see. Because you're going to still going to need to get in and and you need to have it. It's going to have to have a, at least at least enough space for a 40 mil, 40 millimeter diameter uh, threaded there. So I can go here and click on that plane and say create sketch. Oh, capture position, I guess. Okay. And go right here. I hit L key and oh, I moved that whole thing, didn't I? Let's not, let's unmove it. That's what's complained about. Ah, there we go. Okay. I moved it accidentally. Okay, so we'll create a sketch. Go to the front here. Just to make my life easier, I'm going to put a line here that goes all the way to here, which should be 150, because I can type in 150 so I get that exact height. And then I'll click on this. I'll make it a construction line so that way it doesn't bother me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something that I can revolve around. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to go make this another 10 millimeters. And I'll come out here. And so I need that diameter of 40. So I need this to at least go out 20, if not more. So we'll say 22, boom. 
And then what I'll say is I'll have it come down just uh, two millimeters. Oh, if I can. Boom. Or not. Come on. Say two. And there we go. And then I'll do some little nice curves here. So I'll do a three-point arc. And also, if you're new to Fusion 360, you see, I'm, pre I'm pressing the S button to bring up my shortcuts. But your shortcuts are what you placed here. So here, this is a three-point arc. So if you did not have a three-point arc in here, you could search for arc, and you would find three-point arc down here. It's just I use it enough that I stuck it in my tools. And so I'll come down here, and I'll say, eh, we'll make it kind of go to here. And I'll kind of do something. And I'll do, oh. Yeah, I need to do this. Let me do another line from here out to here at 7.5. Just make sure it lines up. And then I'll go from here to here. And we'll do something like that. And then what I can do is, oh, that's already where these lines are touching each other. Uh, there can be some information here. So this right here is tangent. So I can this will be redundant. If it wasn't so, I could press this, press this tangent button, press this next line, and then would, right where they meet would make them tangent. Like I can press this and do this, which is probably going to break stuff, and see to make that tangent. So now they're both tangent, but if I press this, oh, let me do, if I do a line here going down, and if I say, okay, press this and make this tangent to this, it technically makes them all tangent, but it does it in a funny way. Okay, let me undo that last one. And we'll just say that's good enough. Okay, we'll finish the sketch. Okay, now I get out of that. Hit my S key again. Now I'm in three in my 3D modes. So my tools are different. And I'll say revolve because, again, I added that tool in there. So or otherwise you could search for it. So I'll say revolve. And I will... I've already selected that, I guess. And I'll select the axis, which is going to be that axis, 360 degrees, boom, done. So now I've got this little guy, boom. Now I'll go to the top, hit Create Sketch, and I'll go to the top here, and now I'll make my 40 millimeter circle. So I'll choose my circle here, and I'll go out here and say, type in 40, boom, we're done. Select that, Q for my Press Pull tool. And I'll say 15 millimeters, which I want. And then I'll bring up, press S to bring my tools up again. And the thread tool, click on thread, click on that, click on modeled. And I usually just use the default. That's usually good enough for me. But sometimes there are choices. Like I could do an M2, which is much is finer. But I just usually leave it as is. M3, 6G, fantastic. Right hand. You can make them reverse if you want to. Hit OK. And then one thing I've done is is usually when I do these, they're too tight. So what I do is I can come here and press on that plane, the revolving plane, press Q for my press pull tool, and I go back negative 0.2 or negative 0.3. Negative 0.3, and that should be good. So now I got something I can, I can put in there, but um, let's just say that you don't want to do, like here I don't have a thread in the bottom now. Let's say you're like, ah, I want to do something different on the, on, on the bottom. I, I want one piece. I want one piece, and I don't have to worry about putting a thread on the bottom. So I'll come down here, L, come out here to 7.5, uh, come down here to, I don't know, 10. And then we'll come out here just a little bit, maybe 5. I don't know how well this is going to hold up. And let's say, yeah, let's do 10. I can come back here and change that to 10. And then come down here, so let's say a 45 degree angle, and I'll go out. I'll go out a, a big distance because I can trim it later. I can trim it later. Hit escape to stop doing that line tool. Delete that line tool. And let's say I just want to make a nub. So I hit S, and I'll do my three point arc. And I'll hit that, and I'll just go somewhere here arbitrarily and say, okay, it'll do that. And I'll do it again right there and right there and kind of make it interesting, I guess. Now I can press T for a trim tool. And if you don't know where trim tools are, they're also up here. Right there, you can choose some of these uh, T tools. I hit T. 
which will logically trim back to where it sees in the line. So here, here you see that line crosses right here. It'll try to trim it there. T, T. And it just cleans it up a little bit. And I'll say, okay, let's, that looks interesting to me. We'll come back out there. We'll hit S and revolve. Choose that. Select the axes in the center. Boom. And select join so everything joins up. And then boom, now I've got uh, this guy. So it's a little interesting and skinny. And now, um, that way, you could, if you liked what I my print, you could print out the centerpiece, and then you could make your own handles, your own handles, your bars pretty easily because it's just screwed on. So as long as you had that 40 millimeter times three, you're good to go. So here, if this is, if you wanted something skinnier with an automatic nub on the end, just know um, that this is going to print like this. You need to print it this way because, you know, as you flare out, well, that might have a little, well, I'll probably do it. It shouldn't flare out. That should be okay. I kind of try not to go more than 45 degrees, um, but you know, there you go. Okay. So there's an interesting way to make a new bar for it. So we'll see how long this one lasts. I like it. I think it's going to be stout. I think it's going to last a long time. And so far, so good. I forgot to show my notes. Always have a notebook for your ideas. Writing something down can sure help you save some time. Now this one, this was a tough one. Even though a lot of it seems basic, well, I shouldn't say basic, but, you know, beginner, uh, intermediate level stuff, doing threads and screws, things I've done before, I had to go through 11 iterations to get something workable because that snap-in part was just really difficult. Now, my next video is going to be doing something a little different. I'm doing a job for my wife, making a 3D printed frame mat. And I'm also fiddling with a new feature in the latest Prusa slicer called ironing. At any rate, I'm very stoked about doing the picture frame mat. A lot of homeschool moms are also crafters. If I can show them some ways to use 3D printing for crafts, it makes it easier to sell for the homeschooling family. And I really want to encourage the homeschooling families to get some 3D printers because there's all kinds of cool things you can do with them.